Beautiful. Okay. Perfect. Hello, George. What's up? I am so excited that you're on my podcast, and I'm even more excited because we have the tacos here. This is George's collab with Coyo Taco yeah. and... Y La Canaria. Y La Canaria. There you go. The best croquetas in Miami with a iconic taco spot in Wynwood, and now they're spread out throughout the 305. We created this for 305 Day, which if you're not watching and you're not from Miami, or sorry, if you're watching and you're not from Miami, yeah. um, it is like Miami's day because the area code is the 305, hence my username yeah. is Mr. Eats 305. I love it. Because I'm from the 305. Your branding is like perfect. Like I think it's so good for so many different, like anything in Miami, like your branding is great. Thank you. You've I appreciate it. Uh, shout out to like my brand designers uh, that we work together, Rostrand Design Co. Um, they kill it with everything when it came to the merch, to the logos, color palettes, fonts, anything that I do, I work in tandem with them. Yeah. No, it's awesome. And I've never tried this before. So I'm going to get the first bite. Do it. I'll hold, on. I'll, I'll hold the mic. Oh, thank let's you. Let's see. So it, well, yeah, explain what's, it, what's in it. <laughs> it is a corn tortilla with a ham croqueta, which if you don't know what a croqueta is, it is a Cuban protein bar. Mm -hmm. It's Cuban, like mozzarella stick without the mozzarella in it. <laughs> yeah. So it has like, it has ham, bechamel, uh, parsley, some spices, and then it's breaded and fried. Yeah. Then you have all the good stuff of the taco, like peppers, onions, some cheese, some some chipotle sauce, uh, parsley, tortilla chips, and I'm sure I'm missing some other things, but try it out. Let's see. Okay, perfect. Let's see. Get that crunch. <laughs> Get that crunch. It is messy, so I don't know if this was a good idea to eat it on the pod, but it's fun. So why not? What are your thoughts? This is amazing. Oh, thank you. She's only saying that because mm -hmm. I'm right in front of her. Mm -hmm. You have to try it for yourself and see. It's no, so you're good. good. Why? One, I love croquetas. Okay, same. It's like one of my favorite foods. And I love like pickled things. So pickled onion, the jalapenos, like that, like not vinegar taste, but you yeah, know, like the it's like acidic taste. kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah, yeah. It's so good with the croquetas. Thank I've you. Never had that before. There you go. And I prefer corn tortillas over flour. Same. So, same. so that <laughs> so was part of the process of like, thank you. That was part of the process of trying to make it a good balance, but you know, next level mm -hmm. taco no this is so good thank you and my mom's in the other room over there and her favorite food is like croquetas oh, and no, so food, she's, so she's gonna love it that's hope that's yeah hope. i'm gonna take one one bite and then we'll keep keep talking on the pod but okay perfect. do your thing well, I'm gonna, while i do my thing yeah <laughs> i'm gonna make a mess though that's for sure how often do you eat this this specific item yeah uh, this is the second time I've had it. The first time I had it was when we were testing. Oh, okay. It. Yeah, yeah. It just we're filming what on the twelfth rent today yeah, is. Like a week old. Came out on the three oh five day. I was out of town until Monday, so okay. I haven't had a lot of opportunities. So another bite. Mm. It's solid. I feel like I have cheese all over my face, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm gonna start getting this. What? Um, it's only it? yeah. It's only until the end of March. Okay. And they don't have any croqueta taco? No. Okay. Nowhere. Yeah. No, yeah, no, I've never heard mm -hmm. of it. Yum. Okay. Sorry, guys. We're yeah, going to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just fast forward about like 30 seconds or we're going to cut this. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Really good. As much as I want to finish both of them, we'll stop after mm -hmm. we finish the first one. Do you know how many people ordered this one yet? Have people been tagging you like crazy? People have been tagging me and telling me it's good. Um, so I'm thinking, I think it's doing well. Is it at all Coyo Tacos? It is. I'm very satisfied and pleased with the, with the result. Mm -hmm. It's really good. That was so delicious. Okay, anyone from Miami, go and get that taco. Yes, you can get it March. at any Coyo Taco. And if you find the post that I made about it on my Instagram, mm -hmm. Mysteries305, I do have a discount code if you're ordering it in DoorDash. Mm -hmm. I think it's 305, sorry, Coyo305. But to verify, we'll put it on. The, we'll put it in the show Beautiful. notes. What it is? Beautiful. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Well, I'm so excited right. I have you here. Right over here, Thank don't worry. <laughs> I might have the same. I'm not gonna let her go through the entire podcast. Here, let's see. Without. I have a mirror on the back of my phone. Oh, do for I have this reason. Oh, yeah, I'm, good. I'm a professional. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. 
Perfect. Okay. So since I, I'm so excited, first of all, to have you on the podcast. Thank and you. I've never had anyone that's a food blogger before. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's like, there are a dime a dozen nowadays. Yeah. So I feel like you would have had somebody on there, you know? There are, but like I said, your branding is super unique, I think, because one, it's very cohesive. Like there's a lot of people that are just like, foodies Mm -hmm. and they just whenever they travel wherever they go they'll post you know what they're eating and that's helpful that's good but i feel like yours is so consistent to one miami and also like the style video that you do Mm -hmm. and you're saying uh, don't take a bite without me like it's just cohesive did you think of that from the beginning or at first like were you just posting like everyone else like your favorite restaurants and then all of a sudden you were like wait this is growing or was it like a strategic business decision? So let me unpack that all. I'm gonna, I guess I'll start from the beginning of, mm-hmm. of the creation or inception of Mr. Eats 305. It started in 2016, okay. back when my wife and I first started dating. Like when you first start dating someone, you just love going out to eat and like getting to know everybody. It's kind of like what couples do. Yeah. So I was back then posting on Snapchat and my friends would be asking me like, oh, where'd you go this time? What would you order? That kind of sparked the idea of kind of giving them a page where they could go and stop bothering me and figure mm-hmm. out what, what what we got. Hence, the creation of Mysteries 305. It was started to help guys take their partners, where to figure out where to take their partners out to eat. Yeah. So is that what like the your like mission was or your goal was like, hey, guys, here's where you take your girlfriend to eat? In the beginning. Eat? And then I realized at the time it was mostly women – who cared about where to eat Mm -hmm. and guys weren't really on social media as much at that time. My following was 80% women, 20% male. Wow. And now it's 55% women, 45% male. Oh, wow. So realizing that I shifted it to a more generic mission statement, which is helping locals and tourists alike find great places to eat in Miami, as well as my own personal adventures. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what it's been since 2016. And back then from 2016 to 2021, before the launch of Reels, it was photos and some videos of like in the kitchen, talk not talking to chefs, but seeing the behind the scenes of how favorite dishes were made at specific restaurants in mm-hmm. Miami. Um, then Reels launched and the business, pl- the business strategy kind of changed. Yeah. Um, at the same time Reels launched, I also had just graduated from law school. Okay. So with that, it was a good time to transfigure, rearrange the style and approach. That's when the branding started coming in. I realized that I had a good platform, a good reputation. Um, I wanted to continue to diversify myself from the other creators. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got the branding. Uh, I had the idea for the map that I launched on the website. Um, Had the idea for merch. Yep. And continue to to grow the page into what it is now. Yeah, that's so. When you before Reels launched, that was I mean Reels launched what like a year and a half ago, two years ago. No, I think like during during COVID. I think 2020, 2021. Oh wow, it just feels like it just no, launched. It, it, it feels like yesterday. <laughs> okay, so before then, was it something that you were still doing as a hobby? Because I know you were in law school, so yeah. you were also a full time student. But did you was it like a career at that point, or was it were you making money? Like when did you first start? seeing this more as a career rather than some, you know, like a fun little side hustle? I didn't see it as a career until I took the bar exam after, mm-hmm. after graduation. And there's like a two month waiting period to get your results. Mm-hmm. And within those two months, I kind of gave myself these benchmarks that I wanted to hit. And if I hit them, I told myself, let me give it a shot towards making this a career. Um, and I hit them like immediately. Wow. Thankfully. Uh, how was, I know you said wow, but th- how is just consistency through posting videos, reels, 30, I think it was 30 or 40 cons- consecutively. 30 to 40 reels? Yeah, consecutively. And I gained, like in like, a month yeah, or? In, in the 30 to 40 days. Okay. So every single day. Yeah. Um, wow. Of good value and not just like a cheese pool and call it a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I grew like 15,000 followers wow. in that time frame um, with a good like growth path too, not just like a spike and right. that's it. Right. 
And was that something that you decided like, okay, I'm going to batch a bunch of content. I'm going to post for 30 or 40 days. Or like, how did you prepare to post for 30 or 40 days? Or you were just like creating content daily. And so it came naturally or came easy. <clears throat> I, I was creating daily, but I was also batching in the sense of, all right, I can't go out on Thursday. So let me on Wednesday visit three spots mm -hmm. to cover for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Mm -hmm. When you were doing this, were you getting stuff for free or was, were you paying for all of this? So I could have gotten things for free, but I would say some of it, but not all of it because since I, w I was in such a short time frame, mm -hmm. I didn't want to feel like planning to, to visits, logistically so, yeah. and, and say like, oh, I want to go to this restaurant on Tuesday, but then something happens and now I have to reschedule. Like I wanted to organize my time towards creating content rather than sitting down behind an email and trying to plan out yep my free meals like yeah. i realize it's an investment and it's something i genuinely love doing and i still to this day go and spend my money mm -hmm. to, to to at spots that don't reach out or i'm more curious about or still want to create content i just don't need to do it thankfully every single day yeah yeah are you like when you were doing it giving yourself that two-month benchmark mm -hmm. Did you think, okay, if I don't hit this goal, I'm going to become a lawyer. I'm going to work for big law. Or like, what was your plan when this was still a f hobby for you? Yeah. So I, in that time, I was waiting the results. So if I would have said, if I passed, even if I hit the benchmarks, I feel like I would have tried being an attorney and practicing. Mm -hmm. um, and if I failed, I would reconsider sitting and taking the bar exam again mm -hmm. I, I will really weigh the options and and see if there's value in what i was doing and what i came down to was how many attorneys are there in south florida and then how many people have the platform that i created in the four years prior to that or five years prior to that that are actually bringing value and enjoy doing it and mm -hmm. those reasons kind of led me towards wanting to do that daily yeah um and I, I didn't think it could become what it was, but I knew that I could. it was a right time because of Instagram putting their attention towards reels, social media, seeing the growth of how impactful it was mm -hmm. compared to traditional marketing. Yeah. I knew that it wasn't just like a random kid posting videos on social media. I knew that there was actual monetary gain mm -hmm. towards it, but that wasn't like the, the main deciding factor. Yeah, I feel like there's so... I mean, nowadays, the only way I find restaurants is through social media. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'll Google, you know, like restaurants near me if I'm wanting to find, you know, close restaurants if I'm in a certain area, but I'll still go on TikTok, I'll still go on Instagram and I'll try to find, you know, influencers or people talking about it so I can see the food, I can see the vibe, I can see their yeah. review and it's a much better resource. That one video review to me is more valuable than like what the yelp score yeah when, when it's done right you get to see the ambiance you get to see what people are wearing you get to see what people are eating um it's like a full-fledged review in 30 seconds yep and i love that i love when they're done concisely and and and, and well and thorough mm -hmm. with due diligence um but yeah, next time, you, instead of Googling, you can just go to the Mr. Eats 305 website yep. and check out the map and you can see what's near you, what neighborhood you want to visit, what cuisines you're craving. You can yeah. type it in. It's That's my like baby right now because if you were to even ask me like, oh, what's your favorite restaurant? I'd be like, check the map. I have just a tab it. for favorites. Mm -hmm. you know. Um, and another thing, Forbes even wrote an article saying that 80% of restaurant um, outreach are looking for what to eat happens on instagram or tiktok over google no. yeah no it's crazy and i mean like i am not a food food influencer but i post a lot of lifestyle content so mm -hmm. i post my life in miami and so i'll have even restaurants reach out mm -hmm. and be like hey for you know stories and a and a reel or just stories like we'll give you and a friend free dinner mm -hmm. drinks whatever and it's always so and now i have like a miami highlight on my instagram so that if anyone ever asked me for like my favorite stuff it's there and i'm not even like a food creator or whatever creator yeah. yeah yeah but it's still so valuable from like any creator's perspective because they trust me you mm -hmm. know and like with you i've gone to places that you've recommended and i've loved it and Thank so you. i'm like okay i like trust your reviews yeah. now yeah i mean i i don't post anything that i don't like 
Yeah. <clears throat> so even if they're inviting me for free, if they're even a, tr- uh, negotiating to pay me, mm-hmm. if I am spending the money on my own, I'm if I don't like it, I don't post it. There's mm-hmm. times where they send out the entire menu and I only post three or four items because those are the ones that are better than the rest of them. Mm-hmm. So people are always like, oh, you know, you only post things that, that you like. This guy, you know, is just posting everything. It's like, no, it's it's curated. It's mm-hmm. honest. It's I just don't want to talk negatively about my neighborhood, about small businesses, right? about people have off days. It might not just be for me. Right, so there's right. so many things, but people just have to remember like when you are navigating through the page, it's subjective and your palette's subjective. So mm-hmm. is everyone's. Do you ever post negative reviews? No. I think no. that's nice because like you said, people are having off days no. or you might love something and someone else might hate something or vice versa. And uh, you know, like have you, obviously you've heard of like Keith Lee, you know, mm-hmm. like Keith Lee effect that I was reading some articles where like he'll post something, you know, negative and I'm not like bashing him for posting his honest opinion, but just like the power that they hold, like that restaurant will suffer. <clears throat> they if, have, he's closed multiple restaurants in, yeah. in Atlanta and other places. And it's just like, yeah, man, like you were doing so well and mm-hmm. like you, you were made pop like famous or you got popular because of the good you were bringing to your community. Yeah. Like, you can still be honest and keep highlighting the good right? without having to bash like the bad restaurants. Right. I think if the, you just don't like the food or if it's, you know, not your preference or even if it's bad service because like one waiter, one person does not reflect no. the entire restaurant. Like I've been to some of my favorite restaurants and I've had like a bad experience, but I'm going to go back another time because I know that I've had good experiences other moments so yeah it's just crazy like the power you hold um which is cool that you only choose to highlight what you like yeah i think it's important not only for my reputation but for the businesses and then the whole community like yeah. i don't want people spending their money on a m- average meal right you know things are getting harder now like um financially for people and that is something that i'm taking more into in, into account mm-hmm. like all right, like we were talking before is before I would post things in different neighborhoods just to showcase that it's there and it's a good option. But some people look at it and they see like, oh, this is the best of this cuisine. He just posted about it. So I need to go and, and try it out. Not necessarily. Um, you know, I I like just to highlight good meals that I've had throughout the city, mm-hmm. whether it's in North Miami or in, in Homestead. Yeah. Um giving people options and that's what the map is there for as well yeah but some people see it and they're like oh and this he posted a taco that must be the best taco it's like no it's just a fun or or a nice one that you have options throughout the city and and people are going to enjoy it i would say the lists and ranks that i do of of like the best tacos or the best pizza or the best burgers those are the ones that i'm really making sure that no one is swaying my opinions mm-hmm. i'm like trying to pay off like like with a not a not a mustache and and glasses but really like trying not to be recognized mm-hmm. and and being as honest I c- as i can when it comes to rankings mm-hmm. you started this in 2016 when yeah. did you start getting recognized and when did you start kind of becoming a, a name in the miami food and creator scene <sighs> I think that's that's a, a good question to ask more of the audience. Yeah. Uh, I, but I guess when did you, when was the first time you felt were, yeah felt like oh this restaurant recognized me when I walked in? Um, I'd say when I started doing the reels in yeah, a consistent video, is yeah, more recognizable, more recognizable. Um, in the first few years of the page, I didn't show my face. Oh, really? It was only photos of the food. How was your engagement when it was just the photos versus when you started showing like yourself more and your personality? It felt the, f- the engagement was fine before like people liked the up close and personal with the food and you also didn't have carousels, you didn't have albums. So it wasn't like, mm. you know, and it felt like I was less, less self-indulgent yeah. because it, it was more about like the food. Mm-hmm. that's how i still try to do it today i try to make sure that it's not about me it's more about like the food and the experience yep um and so t- to go back to your question i think when i started showing myself obviously 
that happened in like 2018, about two years after, um, people in the industry started to recognize it more and more, but that was more behind the counter. Mm-hmm. Um, people just like at the gym or at Publix or something yeah. like that. It was more like 2021, 2022. Okay. And when you started and it was just the photos, just the carousel, and then you, you know, you took the bar, you decided to give yourself that two month benchmark. That's when you said that you started thinking of it more like a business, right? And yeah. like thinking about the website and the platform and the the merch and the branding. Was that just, did that come to you naturally or was that something intentional where you had to like sit down and be like, okay, I'm going to go all in on this. This is the strategy. Or was it just kind of like, let's see, like, let's hit these benchmarks and kind of see where it goes. Like, what was the progression of that? Well, even throughout the progression of Mr. Eats, I had always written down goals and ideas that I had to diversify or grow the the brand. Um, I would say it happened naturally. I wasn't forcing it or rushing the merch or the map. Like the map I had loaded without making an announcement like on the website for about six, seven months. Really? Yeah. Why didn't you make an announcement on it? I wanted it to be as perfect as it could be. Um, Make sure that I'm not missing any spots making sure that I'm doing my due diligence and and y- y- personally being a user mm-hmm. of it first and seeing what I'm missing. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably could have announced it sooner mm-hmm. looking back at it, but I'm glad I didn't because it just felt like the brand was more established by the time I launched the map. It yeah. just kept, it kept growing the, I guess, like the stature of of the brand Mm -hmm. it made it seem more legit yeah or when when i had released it yeah and when did you start coming up with like your branding like was that before this the shift of like the the benchmarks and no it was after um the bent that was part of like the the benchmarks um so took schedule wise is i took the exam um had like a week off then wrote down a business plan of benchmarks and like goals and aspirations, things that I had already had like a skeleton of, but really putting it in a more detailed manner. Um, And then just trying to work towards that daily. Yeah. And that was when I had just taken the bar exam. So early 2021. Okay. And was that like a, a, did you come up with everything or was it like a team that you hired or no, so what I, is it? Who does, and who, who's your team now? Um, so at that time it was me a hundred percent. My wife, she would, she'd be like my, uh, my soundboard Yeah. where I would just kind of test things on and she would like, yay or nay approve kind of really help me keep me in check with everything. Um, aside from this time, like always. So mm-hmm. shout out to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, then I forgot how it was that I found my current designers. I think literally the algorithm of Instagram yeah. showed me on my For You page uh, some image that they posted on their IG that I really liked. Like, oh, this is something that matches the vibe that I had in mind for Mr. Reach. It was like vintage meets modern. Um, <clears throat> and I already had kind of like a mood board that I was putting together. So I did like half of the work for them. Yeah. Um, which made it a little bit easier to know that what I wanted for yep. the brand. Yep. Um, so then I reached out to them. They created what what you see as Mr. Eats now. And we just kept growing on that and, you know, diversifying from the logo, yeah, the hat. that logo right there. Oh, I love it. Um, the don't take a bite without me, which is like the foam fingers of, there you go. Yeah. Um, the YouTube watchers yeah. can see it now. Exactly. <laughs> if you're on audio, you got to get on YouTube. <laughs> uh, apologize for that. <laughs> um, and then you have like a simple M, then you have a primary word mark. Like we thought of it as a baseball team, essentially. Yeah. You know, that it was like a main logo, a logo for like a jersey, a logo for um, different types of merch. Mm-hmm. We made sure that we were doing things from the early stages that might not you might not even see until five years from now yeah i think that's what i really appreciate appreciate about your brand is that it doesn't feel like it's just like cobbled together like it doesn't feel like this random person that just goes out to eat and when they do they happen to shoot content and recommend which if that's you that's totally fine but it felt it, it feels like it's like a you're the brand but then 
you have like merch that people would actually wear. Like I would wear that hat, you know, I wouldn't, if it just said like Mr. 305 Eats or Mr. Eats 305, I wouldn't, you know, like it's like the logo is cool. The M is nice. Like it kind of lives aside from you. I Mm -hmm. feel like, like if you, not to say that you were to step away, but like if you were, the brand could live on its own also. Yeah. And that, thank you because that kind of, is done on purpose, like what I mentioned about the videos, that it's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's about the restaurants, it's about the food, it's about the community, it's bigger than me. Yeah. Um, And I don't really need to have people wearing like Mr. Eats on their chest. Yeah, right. I get it. It's not that, like, no one's really going to wear that. I wanted to make something that was for Miami. Yeah. And done that in like a cool organic way like the m sure it stands for mystery eats but you it also know, stands for miami it stands for miami yeah that's what i actually thought i thought at first miami yeah yeah you know so that's that's why it doesn't need to be like mystery eats branded all over the place mm-hmm. did are you from miami i am yeah yeah so, so born, born and raised, raised uh, okay and your family is from here from 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 um they were born in, in jersey grew up in new york and then moved down to miami when they had me Mm-hmm. and then lived their life in, yeah. all here in Miami. So they're half and half, I guess. Yeah. Because they moved down when they were in their 20s. Okay. And, and then their parents are, are Cuban. Cuban. Okay. Yeah. So that's why, I mean, Miami is perfect for you then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, New York too at the time, like in Jersey, there was a mm-hmm. lot of like Cubans growing up as well. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, Miami is the perfect fit for me. I love it. Yeah. Do you ever wonder like, I can't move from Miami because your brand is so Miami focused or does that ever feel like it limits you since it is like focused on one city? I It's not solely focused on one city. I've, I've thankfully, because I love traveling, mm-hmm. um, I've just gone on my travels and people recognize that my followers and they'll be like, Hey, I'm going to Chicago. Have you been there? Okay. You know, I'm curious to see what you've eaten over there as just like as a consumer, not if yeah. I don't need to post content about it or whatever. Right. Um so how I see the the brand now is that I am just a Miami guy who loves to eat no matter where he goes and his audience is like I'm curating the content with a Miami palette so yep. people are running or like I'm their filter. Yeah. Yeah. For wherever destination they've gone to. So this this job, this brand, it's it sent me for work, not just out of vacation to San Diego, Vegas, New York, Texas, wow. um, Iceland, France, Spain. So even brands are starting to see that. Yeah, he his all his most of his followers are from South Florida. Yeah, he's from South Florida, but the style of content and mm-hmm. my due diligence goes deeper than just like eating at a random place in Chicago or whatever right. the city may be. Okay, I'm I- really like digging deep into what the best is of that city so if we're going to chicago i want you know the best chicago dog i want the the Mm -hmm. best deep dish i want to figure out where people are going yep and i try to do that with every city yeah and do you what i mean i'm actually curious why did you go to like iceland and france and spain or even like vegas san diego was it all for food like food content yeah so um you know so life's it we're kind of like opposites where it's food first but lifestyle lifestyle. is kind of second and Mm -hmm. travel esque um so that goes for fashion and and hats or whatever maybe i try to incorporate that naturally within my content yeah so i'm always trying to rep you know a different sports team or my own merch or you know wear different sneakers for the youtube people if you're you're (laughs) watching um and just organically post about it Mm -hmm. so people can feel like they they know me more than just the food uh, so they understand my travels, they understand my interests, they understand what I look like, what I sound like, what, you know, what I wear Yeah. Um, to feel like they know me. And at the end of the day, I want to come up on the news feed and feel like I'm just another friend that you're following on social media. So yeah. that goes into why I travel and why they send me out there. Some of it's just because organically I enjoy doing it, mm-hmm. but then I'll post, hey, I'm going to Iceland. And then I had a chef reach out hey you know i have a restaurant here so i'm like cool. dude how are you why are you following me and you're in iceland and i'm like i didn't, even, I didn't ask that an question international but city yeah that, and that that helped that helped my brand too when miami popped off after covid like yeah all the eyes were on the 305 yeah so that's when i started following you yeah so appreciate it so that's 
also what helped aside from my content and 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 what i do and the consistency it was that miami was just popping off yeah so i like talking about the business side Mm -hmm. of things a lot because that just like makes it fascinates me okay um how when did you start getting paid off of content creation and did you when you first started was it like uh, were you like wait what someone's offering to pay me or did you have to say okay i think i'm worth money now like i need to start you know telling brands that this is my rate um so i never to this day have solicited any sort of business i've never reached out to uh sure microphones and yeah. saying like <laughs> hey i use your microphones on a, on my podcast like you want to pay me a thousand dollars so I could give it a shout out like I just did. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. I haven't done that to any restaurants, any brand, nothing. Um, they've all come come to me thankfully. Um, it's maybe something I do want to change now after nine years of doing this. Yeah, that I've established myself and I want to work with certain brands that I feel like make sense for both parties. Mm-hmm. But it's never just a one sided street where I'm like, hey this is me, let me, pay me to talk about you. Like, no, I want it to make it make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the first time I got paid to post about content was relatively early. I would say okay. like the first year in doing like 2017, 2018. I guess, yeah, brands were paying at that time. I'm trying to think. Like, very small. Like I maybe yeah. made that year like 10. 10,000 or something. At most, yeah. like yeah. off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. And then it probably stayed like that, like maybe 20 the next year, maybe 30 the next year. It was like, right. but that was because I was growing and social media was also growing and more budgeting for bigger companies were going towards creators and online presence. That was, that money was coming from solely national brands and like creator platforms that were, that had companies signed up and had creators signed up and they would match Got it. Like the marketplaces. Exactly. Okay. And then now does majority of your income come from brand deals or does it come from like the merch that you're selling, the platform that you have? Yeah. So it's the majority financially comes from brand deals still, but they're less frequent. Mm -hmm. So by majority, I'm saying like the the budget is higher, but it's only like once a quarter or yeah. Or like once a year, depending on the campaign, depending on, what they're looking for Mm -hmm. um and that's also done on purpose because i also don't like talking about the same brand so repetitively i don't want it to feel inorganic or too salesy Mm -hmm. um so sometimes i have cut back on potential like money in order for it to not like drown my newsfeed yeah yeah and the campaigns that you do since you do once a quarter once a year let's say what what does a campaign look like for someone that is you know a food account mainly because I know for lifestyle, like I can do so many one-off brand deals. Mm -hmm. Like it's like an Instagram post here, a real YouTube integration, a podcast ad. But for you, I feel like it has to be a little bit more intentional or else people aren't going to trust you. If every spot, every, you know, review is a sponsored post. Yeah. No, I mean, not everyone like the, the deliverables are, could be the same as you. Um, but when the brand gives me more flexibility, yeah, the better the content will be and the more organic it would be. So for example, I work a lot with, um, let's say one that's done in the past, DoorDash. DoorDash. Um, yeah, it makes perfect sense for They you. have a list of a bunch of restaurants online that I love, that I've been to. And thankfully, they're flexible in saying like, all right, pick whatever restaurant you have. We have signed up on DoorDash and post about it. I'm like, perfect. That's already <laughs> what I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I make sure that the collaborations make sense. Even things that are a little bit tighter where I'll mention McDonald's. What you think fast food? I've worked with them in the past and people are like, oh, bro, that's big, big company. You sell I I'm like, McDonald's. dude, I love McDonald's. <laughs> I love like, McDonald's. On weekends, I look forward to potentially getting McDonald's yeah, and or- treating myself and just whenever it may be. It doesn't have to be on the weekends. Like right. my wife and I, I think we ate it like two days ago and we're like, dude, look, should we, should we get this? And I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's fire. Who cares? Like we are simple people maybe associate me with you know uh, a elevated palate or a fine dining or whatever maybe i'm like no man i'm just like you like i had taco bell like two days ago i had yeah. mcdonald's the other day like i love yeah. that too just because it's not a local restaurant doesn't mean 
I can't go and eat McDonald's mm-hmm. or like Chipotle or, you know, I would say Starbucks is probably the least I visit. There's so many coffee shops. Yeah. And, there's, and Miami has so much, so such good coffee. Yeah. Whether it's Colombian coffee, Cuban coffee, whatever it may be. Um, I think the coffee and they're, and they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Just like f- fast food chains. What? I'm actually curious now because I haven't found a coffee shop that I love. I Actually, I love Vice City. I was going to say we're right across the street from it. Vice City is my favorite in Miami. Okay. But what is your favorite coffee shop hmm. that, or one of your favorites that you would say? I'm going to answer your question with another question. Okay. What's your go-to coffee order? Just and that will help my answer. An ice latte. Okay. Okay. I don't like flavors or syrups yeah, me or anything like me that. Neither. Um there there are a lot uh i have a whole tab on my i know i'm gonna go on there (laughs) for coffee (laughs) i'm actually gonna tell my friend because my friend my best friend has a coffee shop in texas which if you ever go you have to go there it's where in in texas uh dallas oh okay i haven't been in dallas since 2018 okay if you go you have to go to hers but she's coming this weekend and she's planning on opening one up in miami nice so you'll have to go and and see her place it's costa rican and like the food's costa rican amazing coffee she has her own farm and every like her family has farms in Costa Rica. Yeah, yeah. So it's like farm to table. But her like I was trying to give her a list of coffee shops to go to. And there's so many here that like like I can't I, I Vice City is my favorite, but it's hard to match like the cute coffee shop vibe with also good coffee, I think, in Miami. Yes, on a grander scale. Um, because Miami is such a culture of like ventanitas and yes, like yeah. casual go in get your colada and hang out talk crap with all the viejos yeah. there for a little bit <laughs> um or, and and then leave and you're good or take it back to the office and, and you talk crap over there yep. you know it's it's made for that type of thing and that's not really like the, the coffee shop vibe right right uh, but there are still a lot of good spots so to answer your first question i think my favorite coffee in miami is from sweet habana cafe which is down the block that way i don't think i've been it is fantastic it's cuban n- coffee near, yeah it's, it's in winwood us? yeah oh, like, you know where okay. the fireman you know where fireman derrick's mm-hmm. is the new one yep um right across the street from there i gotta go okay um there and there's a bunch of other great ones tinta y cafe caracas bakery um there are a lot of coffee shops a lot of bakeries that have good coffee um the list I'm gonna can go send on and her on your but, platform yeah because like i was just sending her like okay there's vice city there's which is Panther. also a good one too by the yeah. way like in those and panthers iconic they're the first ones to yeah. do like real craft coffee in the city so like they're still doing good stuff but for me yeah i like the variety mm-hmm. at sweet havana and 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 the quality okay i'm gonna send her your platform because awesome. i'm like i don't know like well, she just, should be listening too so yeah she, will. she yeah. will she will i give her a shout out like all the time like if if i'm talking coffee i'm like so my best friend owns a yeah, coffee like the shop. only person she knows that drinks coffee yeah. <laughs> i know okay so favorite coffee shops are those what about like what do you think miami does really really well like i mean i would say cuban food number one but what else do you think miami is like known for or should be known for but they're not okay um I think m- what Miami does really well is the diversity of cuisine mm-hmm. that we have to offer. There's Miami is a melting pot. Yep. There's so many, so many, so many different people here and it translates within the cuisine. Yo, I think Miami has some of the best food. I so, love the food here. Yeah, everyone thinks about it as Cuban uh, food because you're mm-hmm. in Miami, but we have really good Caribbean food and, 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 you know, not just you think Caribbean, you think still Latin American, you think Dominican, Puerto Rican, like, no, no, no. Also Trinidadian, Guayan and like mm-hmm. Guyanese. I don't, not sure what Guyana would be. Jamaican <laughs> food, like all, all the different regions within central South America, the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. I think they do a really good job here. Um, lacking, I would say maybe like some more, european not like italian because we have a plethora of italian yeah there's a handful of german spots Mm -hmm. um but maybe some more interesting cuisines that i haven't seen yeah i think so i i'm more in north miami and i think what we're missing there is good casual asian oh really yes no i think there's actually a lot of good casual asian spots around there yeah yeah. okay i need to go on your website then because like there's fancy asian yes but I just want a good takeout spot. Like of course. A cheap. So if you're in option. Ball Harbor and Aventura, yeah, there's more high end like Makoto is, mm-hmm. is over there. But right in North Miami, 
on the on the map i can't even think of the names <laughs> off the top of my head because that's become my crutch it's just mm-hmm. i keep referring myself to the map <laughs> um but yeah there's a, a big asian population there in, in in north miami okay i have to check it out um, then. and chinese dumplings there's a good dumpling spot there is it dumpling king dumpling king yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they're they're there um and along that strip, I think there's like a bunch of, of options. Okay. I Sang's, have to check. Sang's Chinese. I don't know if that one's in North Miami, but the name sounds familiar and that place is really good. Okay. I'll have to check. What about um, top three favorite restaurants if someone were to like put you on the spot? Yeah. So it, it's different because like it depends who's asking. Like okay. if you were to ask me and, and I'm trying to give you recommendations, I don't want to send you to like the basic spots. Right. Like a Joe Stone Crab, which is fantastic, but it's ba- yeah, it's, it's pretty it's, basic. Like it's yeah. the oldest restaurant in Miami. There's so much history, tradition, good service, good food. But I still think there is better now in Miami than yeah. Joe Stone Crab. But if someone's visiting Miami for the first time, I feel like they need to go. Right. I always tell people to go there too. Yeah. What about like y- you and your wife are going out to dinner? I am very simple. I would probably go for myself. Just get a good cheeseburger, good pizza, yep. like simple things. Like I don't need to go to, and she's very simple too. Yeah. Um, but we enjoy going yeah. out to dinner and, and you know dressing up and and doing a little bit, going to a little bit nicer of a spot than mm-hmm. like just pulling up and like getting a burger and right eating in the car. Right. You know, uh, those spots are like Babe's Meat Encounter in Palmetto Bay or Miami Slice. Um, right here, not, How not do you far avoid the line or get it? Can you do you take it like order it to go or so that line is for to go? Yeah, I know. That's why I'm like, who like I I just don't have the patience to wait in that line. <laughs> but you can eat it there, and it's and it's not not that long of a line. Like you put oh, your name really? down. Yeah. Okay, I've always just get it like when my friends get it. Like yeah. I never actually go and eat it there. I just will yeah. go with my friends. Yeah, yeah. So like their restaurant is like any other restaurant. Um, it's a pizza omakase when you eat inside. You put your name down. They tell you, all right, 30 minutes, you know, come back. We'll text okay. you. And you can enjoy like beers on the patio or walk around, um, okay. get coffee, whatever it may be. Um, and it's cool because you get to try all their slices. Yeah. Or as many as you could eat. Yeah. Eat. <laughs> okay, um, cool. And that's better than getting like an entire box to go because you're limited to, unless you, unless you order seven boxes. Right. Okay. I yeah, I haven't done that because every time I go, I'm like, okay, this line is so long. But <laughs> yeah, then I get it. If I'm with my friends, we'll get it. Like, we'll pick it up and take it to go. Totally. But yeah, with her, I mean, she's been obsessed recently with Tinta y Cafe. It's one in the I Gables, like one in one in Miami Shores. Um, they've been there for like 20 years already too. But it's just so solid mm-hmm. every time. Like, man, they have soups, sandwiches, salads, great pastries, great coffee. They're another great coffee spot. Yeah. Um, the vibe is cool. It's like a cafe, but there's no Wi-Fi in there and, and they yep. really promote like talking to strangers. Mm-hmm. It's more like family style seating, bar tops. So it's just a cool vibe for like Saturday morning. Yeah. Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, Osaka. We love Osaka. The best. So good. It's expensive, but we love Osaka. We love, there's a lot of things that we love. Like, I have a on my website. Uh, this is like this. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Mystery Studio yeah, Five's website. Like, he's paying um, me. He's paying no, um, <laughs> it's just easy because that's where I go to and refer to everything. I have I think seven seventy different restaurants that are under my favorites. Wow. Okay, I need to check it out. So because- like yeah, on there it has every cuisine that we go to that has more than one. Like obviously, there's like not many African spots in Miami, so I don't right. have an African cuisine, but yeah. I do have an African restaurant in like a takeout section. Got it. And and you can type in African and like you will come come up. up. But I have two of my, maybe three of my favorite pasta places. And I, those are uh, tagged under the favorites, burgers, pizza. Like Mm -hmm. I get all the little subcategories and then I tag them into my favorites category. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like 70 of them. And I don't know if I asked this already. I don't think I did. But do you guys cook at all? Or is it like... Oh, I think I think you did ask me that. I don't know if it was on camera or off, yeah. off camera, but I avoided it. Um, well, right now, we, we just uh, bought a house recently, uh, about a few Congrats. months ago. Thank you. And we were getting our kitchen done. And it's not fully done yet. So that's why you don't cook. So as <laughs> right why. now, right now. Uh, in the past, we, we enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> but I wouldn't say that we cook yeah i mean i'm we the worst cook. at cooking yeah and cooking she's better than i am i'm more of a sous chef to to her okay i'm more of the taste tester yep rightfully so um 
but yeah, we enjoy it. I, I, I think the creativity that I see from the restaurants in Miami, it's, it's cool to apply it sometimes Yeah. in your own kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, but as of now, no. And last question before well, we end the podcast, right. <laughs> kicking you out. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to someone who does want to start a food account now? Because there are so many, yeah. like, do you recommend starting on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, uh, repurposing across all of them, like sticking to one city or going all over? Like, what would you recommend? I would recommend doing whatever is easiest for you at the beginning. So like, If you enjoy only Instagram, then for now, post only on Instagram and do it consistently and do, it doesn't even have to be food. It can be in any creative space. Like don't think it's too late or you missed a bus or whatever it is. Like you are unique Mm -hmm. in your individuality in creating content and the more unique you are and the more value you give in your, in your posts, the more successful you will be. Um, what I've noticed people enjoy watching things that are of value, not mm-hmm. just, uh, you know, the food porn or, right. or, you know, seeing me, if I was like, I had a six pack and I had a pizza in front yeah. of me, like yeah. no one really cares and, and gives it value. Like, cool. They're like, Oh shit, that's cool. But like, realistically <clears throat> they want to keep watching your videos when you keep teaching them and keep telling them, not telling them that sounds bad, but like, yeah, yeah. Showing them, showing them, uh, different options and, and showcasing your adventures. Yeah. I think that, I mean, that's <clears throat> great advice for any creator. Cause I always say like, if anyone wants to get in the creator space, number one, it's not oversaturated. At like all. you can get into it. And I feel like every year people are like, Oh, if only I did this in 2020. And then in 2020 people were like, Oh, I wish I did this in 2016. Mm-hmm. In 2016. I'm sure people said, I wish I started this in 2011. Yeah. It's like, People are going to say that every single year. You just got to start now and be yourself as cheesy as that sounds. It's so cheesy, but it's so true. But yeah, be yourself. And like you said, pick a platform. I always say like start with one Mm -hmm. because I think it's overwhelming to be like, oh my God, I need to be everywhere at the same time. And then you can plan your content on Rella. So there's my shout out. Oh, there you go. (laughs) My app. But yeah, no, I totally agree with you with that. Like do whatever is easiest for you. Yeah, and and don't feel like you're copying someone even though it's a similar field. Yeah, I mean, there's only so many ways you can film the same video. Or make it, put a different spin on it. Like, everyone's unique. Like, I post the same way consistently because that's my, like, brand Mm -hmm. and that's what people look for. Yeah. But I could easily take the same video and do it three different ways. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just choose Put to do it that way. It. So like it's out there. Like you can do it. Mm-hmm. You just need to execute, which yeah. is always the hardest part. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, George, for coming on my podcast. Thank you. This was such a fun conversation because honestly, it's questions I've just been curious about. Like before we started recording, I was like asking all these same yes. questions. It was, it was terrible. No, I'm kidding. It was fun. <laughs> it was already like the podcast before the camera started rolling. But where can they find you? Where can they support you? Talk like where can they find your platform? Because I haven't spoken enough about yeah, the website, so what's right? The, what's the yeah. website again? So <laughs> the website, it sounds old school. Like I'm promoting a website, yeah. but mysteries305.com. It's a .com. Maybe plans on making it into an app eventually. But mm-hmm. right now it's very user-friendly, mobile-friendly. That's where you'll find everything that I've been to um, that you can watch on Instagram and social and TikTok and YouTube at just Mr. Eats 305.com. So Mr. Dot Eats 305. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thank for you for having on. me. And remember, don't take a bite without me. Oh, perfect. Cheers. You have the branding down. Look at that. <laughs>